What's going on guys, Philip here from Blackwell Markets. Hope you guys are all doing well. In this video, I want to talk to you guys about five tips for demo trading, or rather five things we can use our demo account for to move on to our live account. Now, obviously, we don't want to be sticking on the demo account too long. I've seen this so many times. You know, I've been, in this, I've been trading for about six years now, and I've seen this in the industry so many times where people, you know, stick on the demo account and just, you know, they don't know how to move on or, you know, they don't really know what to do. They keep jumping around from strategy to strategy and they don't really know what the right steps are to take to actually use a demo account efficiently to start moving on to what their goal is of live trading. So make sure to stick all the way through to the end of the video to figure out all these little tips and tricks that I've learned so far from the industry from being here for about six years now. Also, before we do dive into the video, make sure to smash that like button, guys. Also, subscribe to the channel if you guys are interested in learning more about trading and improving your current training skills. So without further ado, let's roll the intro and see what we have to look at. So tip number one, guys, obviously this is the most basic one. If you're new to trading, learn how to use the platform. So hopefully, guys, if you you know have been using the platform for a couple of years now, a couple of months now, you should know the ins and outs to it. But essentially, that's what you'll be using it for. Tip number one will be to you know, learn the platform, the ins and outs of it. How does it function? How can I use it? How do I place a trade? How do I move my stop loss? How do I move my take profit? How much, you know, what do the pips mean? What are the numbers on the side mean? You know, all those different things. And also learn how to set up your charts, which is best or best suited for you, right? So we've actually made a couple of videos on that, you know, MT4, MT5 tutorial. So if you guys want to go check that out, make sure you go check out that playlist, which is our MT4 or MT5 tutorial playlist. All right. So let's move on to tip number two. Tip number two, guys, learn how to analyze, right? This is a very, very basic thing. You know, this is the bread and butter of Forex trading is analyzing the market, learning how the market structure moves. Now, remember, the trading, what we see on the charts really is just a mass psychology of people reacting on, you know, people reacting in a big group on certain events. So we see patterns re repeat themselves over and over and over, right? That's just how the human mind works. We see history also repeat itself over and over and over. So we tend to see similar sort of structures and patterns on the charts because it's something that people are familiar with and people tend not to let go of things. So this is why exactly technical analysis work. Everyone is trying to do the same thing, sell high or buy low, right? Everyone is trying to do the exact same thing. So that's exactly why it works. So learn how to analyze the market now, depending on whether you're a demo, uh, sorry, a swing trader or a day trader, obviously you're going to have to be sitting in front of the charts at certain times, especially if you're either going to, you know, university or you've got a job. Uh, you guys need to understand that you've only got a set amount of time in front of the chart. So learn, you know, how the market moves during that time period. You can be sitting in front of the charts and which will be the most effective pairs to trade. All right. So let's move on to tip number three. Tip number three, guys, find your setup. Watch what setups work the best. What do you see in the market before the market gives you a move? So what sort of structure, candle structure you see uh, that the market gives you before initial move in the market, whether it's going to be, you know, break out of a, out of a resistance zone or a sort of pattern like a triangle or a flag, whether you find that Fibonacci retracements give you uh, better things, you know, obviously the first thing you looked at is how to analyze. So now you can use this analysis to figure out when the market starts to move. So like I said, Fibonacci retracements, uh, channel patterns, guys, there are so many ways to make money out of the market if you just spend a bit of time figure out which one works best for you but that obviously is what we're going to look for look for the structure that you see repetitive time and time again take a screenshot of it when you see the market move and you see and eventually you'll start to pick up patterns you see well okay i see this sort of structure so for example for myself let's say uh, I've got a head and shoulders or a zone re-entry. I see the market creates a certain candle structure around the zone. I see, okay, well, now the market tends to drop after that. So that's kind of something that I pick up and I see this pattern repeat over and over and over again, right? We want to see repetitiveness. We want to see consistency in the market. So let's move on. Tip number four, guys, build your strategy. This is when you're really starting to, you know, become or become that trader that you want to be okay so we need to figure out you know you've now figured out where the market starts to move and i can figure out where you can start taking your entry so figure out you know whether it's going to be candle confirmation where you're going to take your entry uh and stuff like that or you know whether it's a certain sort of wick structure that the market gives you before you take an entry but figure out where you need to take your signal into the trade also you need to figure out where you can put your stop loss so this again just comes back down to watching the market and figuring things out right just it will take time like any business or anything you want to build it's going to take a little bit of time for you to figure it out right so where does the market so personally i found you know uh, where the market does struggle to come through or stop me out is when i let's say for example i've got a consolidation zone let me draw it here on the board for you guys to make it a bit more interactive so Generally speaking, if I have a consolidation zone, for example, 
and the market. Let's just make it a nice thick color. Uh, and the market kind of moves in between this. We tend to see some internal support slash resistance areas inside the zone, right? For example, so if I've got a breakout, let's say <clears throat> I don't really trade breakouts, but let's say you have a breakout of the market, right? And you have an entry now right over here. Where are you going to put your stop loss, right? You don't really want to be putting it way down below here because it gives you a massive stop loss, okay? So we're going to look at the internal structure. That's kind of what I do. I look at the internal structure, for example, uh, and I can put my stop loss below there because every time the market hits a support or resistance zone, there's more buying or selling power being kicked back into the market. So every time we come in here, you know, buyers try to pick it back up again. Come back to, to here, buyers try and pick it back up again. Come back down to here, buyers try and pick it back up again, right? So there's a lot of interference, let's call it that, in the market before it has to reach that stop loss. So we just need to figure out where the best place is to put a stop loss, okay? Now, the other thing we need to figure out as well is where to put our take profit. It is absolutely crucial to use your stop loss and your take profit because these things help you to get out the market when you're wrong and it also helps you to take money off the market when you're right, okay? We can't just, unfortunately, uh, you can't just let a trade run forever and ever and ever. And eventually, it has to turn around and you need to figure out where to take money off the table, okay? So figure out where you want to put your stop loss. Maybe look at, let's say, for example, you took a buy, look at potentially, you know, support slash resistance zones where the market could run up to or even if you just want to Set three to one risk reward ratio or two to one risk reward ratio. Uh, you know, that's kind of how it works. Now, this process again is again a little bit longer because you're wanting to figure out what trades work best for you, right? So, if you say, uh, obviously, you'll get stopped out a lot, you'll, you know, run for sure if you'll take profits, you need to really journal these trades as well to figure out, you know, which sort of thing works best for you. For me personally, I found out recently I've changed my strategy quite a lot. Uh, I have removed a lot of pairs that I don't need. I have also, you know, made a set three to one risk squad ratio because I've noticed a lot of the trades where I make, you know, a lot of the trades that are really, you know, high profitability, sorry, profitability or high accuracy are the ones where I just have a set three to one risk squad ratio. I don't go let the trade run into forever or run into a high target, let's say five or six, seven to one sometimes. Uh, when I'm more accurate and when I make the most amount of profit from the market is when I have a set three to one risk squad ratio. So those are kind of things you need to figure out, you know, chart down all the trades, take screenshots of them, whatever works for you, and then compare them. And then over time, you can see, you know, which ones work best for you. Now, this then brings us on to the final tip, tip number five. So tip number five, guys, this is the last step you need to take before you can move on to the live account. It's absolutely crucial that you follow these steps and then just start moving on to a live account. Again, you know, a demo account can only teach you so much and we can, we're going to be very limited learning on a demo account. Really, there's not much you can learn. I mean, think about it this way. If you want to study to be something, it doesn't matter what profession you want to study, but you go to university uh, to go study this thing, uh, you're not going to just continue studying and studying and studying forever, right? You're going to study and eventually you're going to have to Put yourself in the real world where the real world will teach you things you will never learn in university or never experience in university, right? You're going to have to eventually take that step into your career path or your, your decision of your career that you want to do and it just take the step and start evolving as a successful, you know, whatever you want to be, right? So it's the same with the demo trading versus live trading. A demo account can only teach us so much. We cannot just continue to stay on a demo account forever. We have to eventually move on to a live account. Uh, regardless whether we're going to be initially first losing or making money on a live account, this, a live account teaches you psychological things. So the one thing I would say is if you guys first move on to a live account, don't risk a lot of money. It's unnecessary, uh, you know, because sometimes you will lose your psychology kicks in there are a lot of things you struggle with when you move on to a live account, you know, fear, greed, uh, you know, there's so many stuff that really affects your trading, you know, just it really gets to you, um, even if you don't really think about it, but it is, it can be sometimes quite stressful, right? So start off with a small amount, uh, risk, you know, low percentage wise, so you can just get a feel what it's like to actually lose or risk your hard earned cash in the market, right? Because that's essentially what you're doing. But the tip I want to talk to you guys about is testing your strategy, right? So we're going to test this, you know, you want to do 30 trades, I would say 30 trades, at the end of 30 trades, if you are profitable, it's time to move on to a live account, right? So essentially what you want to be doing with these 30 trades is you want to take them over and over and over, see which one you're profitable. Obviously, if you're profitable by the end of the 30 trade, like I said, move on. But the other thing you want to do is as well is you want to be able to take these trades without hesitation, without taking it late entries, without any fear, greed, or panic in your system. You just want to be taking the trade as it is and nothing else, guys. And that is it for this video. If you did enjoy it, guys, if you learned anything, make sure to give us a thumbs up. Like I said, also subscribe to the channel, guys. 
as always, if you guys are interested in learning more about Forex and improving your current trading skills. Now, from us here at Blackwell Market, you guys already know it. Stay tuned. Trade safe.